So today we're going to be talking about Fallout and ranking the Fallout games because Todd Howard is releasing a Fallout TV show on Amazon. And I gotta get this thing out quick because they keep pulling that release date forward. Save us, Todd Howard. So yeah, I will be ranking the Fallout games from worst to best. And first, I would like to mention some honorable or dishonorable mentions. I mean, firstly, there's that Brotherhood of Steel game from the sixth generation consoles, which I really know nothing about, except that it has basically nothing to do with Fallout and that the game is big dog doo-doo ass fart. And I don't plan on touching it at all, so yeah. I played a little bit of Fallout Shelter. Uh, it's kinda cool, it's not really my cup of tea though, it's like, I'm not really into those kinda games where you just kinda sit and watch your shit build. But I mean, for a mobile game, it's pretty extensive, and it came out at a time before, like, mobile games were ridden with shitty microtransactions, so like, while you, I think, can buy shit in the game, it's like, not overwhelming. So I give it points for that. But yeah, Fallout Shelter is pretty cool. It's just not not my uh, not my thing per se. And then finally, the one that realistically might have been on this list is Fallout Tactics. I started playing this game and I, I played a little bit of it, but um, I, I couldn't really get too into it. I mean, something that really turned me off right away was finding out that most of the game isn't even canon, so there's that. And apparently a lot of like the, the lore shit that happens in it is like not lore accurate at all. So that's like kind of a turn off for me. I mean, the real-time combat stuff is pretty cool and calls for some really, like, dynamic fighting and stuff, and it's kind of immersive in a way, which is really cool. Um, but this game is, like, also barely an RPG, which is also a major turnoff for me, especially for a Fallout game. So yeah, while Fallout Tactics does seem pretty cool, it is technically a spin-off, and it's mostly not canon. And most people just rank it at the bottom of their lists anyway, so I'm not including it on the main list. Plus, I haven't played it in its entirety. So without further ado, meine Damen und Herren, Mesdames und Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, get your pitchforks ready because this one is about to rub sandpaper on the salty bums of a bunch of little crybabies. Yes, that is correct. Fallout 4, in my opinion, is the worst mainline Fallout title, even though it was my first. That's right, the game that took my sweet, innocent Fallout virginity happened to leave the sourest taste in my mouth. And this was not always the case. In fact, I loved Fallout 4 when it came out, and, um, it just has aged quite poorly for me, especially after playing every other Fallout game after it. That's not to say that the game is necessarily bad or that there's no redeeming factors about it. In fact, I'd even say that it's still a good game. I just think it's the worst Fallout game. I mean, first and foremost, we gotta talk about the story. Oh yeah, and uh, spoilers ahead for like everything. Fallout 4's story seems to borrow a very similar plotline from the already very derivative Fallout 3 story, which we'll get to later. Except this time, instead of searching for your father, you're searching for your son, and it leads to a plot twist that I think pretty much everybody saw coming. Remember me, I'm just gonna leave you here and grab a new kill Piper or even that amputated Proctor Ingram. Hey, who the fuck is you, fam? Fuck you for picking that up. And the story is intertwined with a bunch of factions, just like every Fallout game, and the factions in Fallout 4 are just hands down the weakest in any Fallout. You have the Institute, which in many ways is like a shittier enclave, and they create these synthetic humans to use for like, slave labor and military and shit like that. And for a little while while I was doing their quests, I could kind of see where they were coming from and making a better world. I mean, they had their shit pretty figured out underground. Uh, but then you get to a point where you talk to your son and he basically tells you that meeting you was kind of an experiment the entire time. And I'm pretty sure I remember him saying something along the lines of everybody in the Commonwealth is like a degenerate and should be destroyed. And, uh, yeah, that, that's just stupid. Uh, like, the, why would you side with them at that point? They're just 
they're just too like obviously evil. And then you have two other main factions, which are basically there to oppose the Institute ideologies in radically different ways. The Railroad being the very humanitarian group trying to rescue the synths because they see them as real people and they don't want them to be slaves. And then you have the Brotherhood of Steel, which see the synths as evil technology and they need to be destroyed, so they basically commit synth genocide. And this version of the Brotherhood of Steel, while being the most militaristic and evil of pretty much every Brotherhood that we've seen, is actually my favorite variation of them on the East Coast, just because I like how the original ideals of the Brotherhood being to hoard all the technology they can find in the wasteland and keep it from the wastelanders because they believe that if it were in their hands they could use it to create another apocalypse and that kind of idea seeps into this version of the Brotherhood of Steel as they see the synths as that dangerous technology which they kind of can be and uh, they want to eradicate them but obviously it presents the the moral dilemma of are they people are they not people yeah I mean Blade Runner did it first so siding with the Brotherhood is probably the most fun option you could do in this game. And then you have, of course, the, the other one I mentioned, the Railroad, which are infamously one of the most boring factions in any Fallout game. They, their missions suck, you know, the, the characters within them are boring, like, there's nothing really redeeming about siding with them aside from the fact that their cause is somewhat noble. But if you really want to be the good guys, then the better option is to side with the Minutemen, who also unfortunately are kind of a boring faction, and if you side with them and do their quest, you're gonna have to deal with Preston Garvey nagging in your ear the entire time about helping settlements. What do you plan on doing about the jet problem in our community? How about the settlement problem? Another settlement needs our help. I'll mark it on your map. So yeah, the faction's not great in this game, and the factions are like one of the biggest parts of a Fallout game, so, like, inherently having bad factions calls for a pretty bad Fallout experience. And another shitty thing about Fallout 4 is the massively downgraded dialogue system. You basically have four options to choose from for every dialogue interaction, and they all basically amount to either saying yes, yes with sass, what, and no which kind of negates like any of the clever writing in some of the other Fallout games with the really fun dialogue options. And another thing is they they abbreviate everything, so you have really have no idea what your character is going to truly say. So you basically will choose like a three word sentence and then he will say like a much longer sentence in the already annoying voice protagonist, which is a whole nother thing. But sometimes what he says just isn't what you wanted him to say, and it just comes out ex just completely wrong and not what you would have said, and it's just really stupid and frustrating. Just a really bad gameplay design choice. They also downgraded the perk and special systems in this game, basically mixing the skills and the perks into one thing and making it very streamlined which kind of hurts the ability to truly make a specific build and takes away a lot of the RPG aspect of the game. They also don't really have a karma system in this game. I mean, it's I think it says that it does, but I, I don't it's just not noticeable, especially compared to the other games. And another nitpicky thing for me is I feel like the physics are downgraded and it's not like the physics are bad in this game, but I feel like everything feels just kind of clunky and slow when you pick them up or move them. But enough with trashing this game, I will say a couple nice things about it. The Commonwealth is a pretty neat place to explore and I appreciate that they took the liberty to try to add diverse areas to the game. I mean the city of Boston is a lot of fun to explore and the surrounding areas are pretty scenic and also fun to explore but I also like how they added that entire giant uh, irradiated zone where the bombs initially hit. That place is cool to see, it's like very eerie. The game also has really good AI and I feel like the world feels very alive because of that. The companions are also pretty great in this game with Nick Valentine being one of my all-time favorite Fallout companions as I'm sure he is for many others as well. Also, something that added a lot of longevity to this game for me was the addition of settlements, which I really, really liked. 
building your settlement and having the companions come and stay and getting attacked by raiders and whatnot. I, I love that kind of stuff. That, that, that was a really good addition. And something that I think flocks a lot of people to Fallout 4 as opposed to some other Fallouts is the modern gunplay. The game feels a lot more akin to your typical FPS when it comes to combat compared to the other Fallouts, which is a good or a bad thing depending on how much of a fan of the original bat system and stuff you are. Personally, I don't mind it. I, I The thing is, I'm a melee build in like every Fallout, so I don't give a shit about that stuff. I just like beating shit to death, you know? But speaking of guns, they added a couple fun new guns to the weapon sandbox, like the uh, the Institute laser guns. Charge your gun, Fry! Oh, right! <laughs> And also this game has a really awesome intro. I mean, not just like the actual gameplay intro where you get to play in 2077 in, you know, the pre-war and see the nukes drop. I mean, that section's awesome, but like the actual like live action Fallout intro is really, really cool. And I hope that the show has like an ounce of spectacle that that intro has. And as for our console compadres, this game added mod support, which is also very awesome and adds for a lot of longevity and cool creative things to do in the game but that's not really a actual part of the game to judge it on so I'll just put that aside but still really cool nonetheless. So yeah, while Fallout 4 is still a good game and there's a lot of fun to be had while playing it, it's there. it also has a lot of blaring issues and it's just, in my opinion, the worst Fallout experience. Oh? Uh -huh. Did this guy really just put Fallout 76 in front of Fallout 4? Yeah, I'll bet your sweet bippy I did. <laughs> Now, before you go crucifying me, allow me to explain. Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves like smooth little babies. I think that Fallout 76 improves on Fallout 4 in so many ways. And if you allow me to just list a bunch of them, I think you'll further understand where I'm coming from. I mean, firstly, uh, I, while I do appreciate Fallout 4's map, Fallout 76's map is not only bigger, but it's also probably the most diverse Fallout map to exist. You have grassy plains, but you also have evil boggy swamplands, mining tunnels, mountains, radiated desert, a golf course. I mean, the setting in general of West Virginia is one of the most original in the Fallout series. It's unlike pretty much any other Fallout game when it comes to location, and there's so much cool lore and diversity that comes with it. I love the Appalachian setting and how they decided to capitalize on a lot of the folklore of that, like all the cryptids and stuff. I, that stuff's awesome, like the Wendigo, the Mothman, that shit is like, it's so cool. What is what? Or is it below us? What the fuck is that? Ah! And aside from just the cryptids, this game also adds so many new and unique creatures to fight, unlike any of the other Bethesda Fallouts, which just borrow a bunch of the same creatures from the original Fallout games, which just doesn't really make sense considering they're based on the East Coast, and like, why the fuck would you be fighting scorpions on the East Coast? The game also has a really good weapon sandbox with all different kinds of weapons with different upgrades and abilities and it's one of the most diverse, if not the most diverse weapon sandbox in any Fallout game. The game's perk system is also massively improved from Fallout 4 with the card system. It's not the same system as, you know, the original Fallouts, but it does at least allow you to focus on a particular build. I also like the factions better in this game for the most part, with my favorite being the Crater Raiders, which essentially are like kind of a good guy type of raider squad. Like they're bad because they're raiders, but they're good because they only do things against other bad people. But they're mostly interesting just because they're such a cool ragtag team of characters. And I would say overall the characters and, and the companions are kind of better in Fallout 4. I still think they're pretty darn good in Fallout 76. 
Another major improvement in this game is there's actual dialogue options and it gets rid of the voice protagonist. It feels much more like a, a classic Fallout in that regard. And one of the best things about Fallout 4 was the settlement building and Fallout 76 just does it way better. I mean, not only can you just make settlements, but you can make restaurants, stores, Mothman shrines, just all kinds of crap that you want to build and you want other players to interact with. And speaking of other players, uh, some of the interactions that you can have with other players and seeing their uh, their settlements and bartering with them and stuff can be fun as well. Hey, uh, hey, I'm cooking here. Do you mind uh, getting off of that? Make me. All right. And people think that this game can't be played offline and it can't be played like a normal Fallout game, and it totally can. I believe now you can play in worlds that uh, don't have any other players in them, but I don't really see why you would because the players kind of add to the experience. It's not like they're super annoying with like griefing or anything. And I think another huge misconception about this game is that people judge it for its launch state, which is understandable because this game without the quest and all that stuff would be super barren and it would get old and dumb really really fast that I understand but people haven't played it since then at least some people haven't and they they don't realize how much it's improved like it it's basically just an actual fallout game at this point there's quests there's companions there's dialogue there's missions like all that stuff's in the game now of course there are a few things like small things that differentiate it from a true single player fallout RPG experience but I think that some of the multiplayer elements adds to the uniqueness of the game and I, there's not really that much I can complain about. The one thing that does bother me is that there's not as much environment interactivity like you can't pick things up and move them which is pretty annoying but you know that's a relatively small thing and uh, yeah. Oh yeah another cool thing they added was mutations which is if you're radiated to a certain point you get certain mutations which affects the player. It has usually a positive effect and a negative effect and that, that's a cool addition as well. Oh, and this game pretty much has what I think is the best and most diverse soundtrack in any Fallout game. It has a lot of the hits of the games that precede it, but also it's got a lot of new songs in there, including one of my all-time favorite additions to the Fallout soundtrack, which is, um, don't Fence Me In by Bing Crosby. And they also, of course, added an awesome rendition of Country Roads, which is really good, actually. Country Roads, take me home to the... And then they also have the Beach Boys' uh, Wouldn't It Be Nice, which is a fantastic song, but um, it, 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 it kind of doesn't feel... It, Fallout in my opinion, but like it's still a great song and I mean who who doesn't like fighting a death claw and being terrified for your life while listening to Mr. Sandman. So yeah, Fallout 76 is a good game and I think in many ways it improves on Fallout 4 and I think a lot of people that trash the game should give it a second chance. Um, yeah, it's it's a good game. It's not as good as the, the ones that are going to follow it, but it's it's still a decent game. Now, me and Fallout 3 have a love-hate relationship. The game has a lot of issues, but it's also kind of great at the same time. One thing that really bothers me about this game's story is that it rips so much from Fallout 2's story, which is especially crazy considering it's the game that precedes it. Like, once again, not only are you in search for the Gek, but you are also once again faced with the adversity of the Enclave. Which is especially annoying considering that at the end of Fallout 2, they explicitly state that destroying the oil rig with the Enclave would completely eradicate them, and that they would no longer be a threat to the Wasteland, and here they are, years later in Fallout 3, a, a shell of themselves, like the, their ideals are not nearly as strong as they are in Fallout 2, and they're just like the clear evil faction with nothing interesting behind them aside from the fact that they follow the orders of a computer. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the Brotherhood of Steel, which 
in this game is absolutely nothing like the original Brotherhood of Steel. It's almost like Todd Howard saw the Brotherhood of Steel in the first two Fallout games and said, hey, those guys look like pretty cool military guys, so that's what I'm gonna make them. Pretty cool, good military guys. And, like, they're basically just the epitome of goodness. It's like, th the moral compass of Fallout 3 is so black and white as to what you choose to do and who you decide with. And not only are the two main factions in Fallout 3 super black and white, but also the dialogue options and choices you make are also extremely limited in this game. It's not as bad as Fallout 4 where, you know, you have like the yes, you know, yes, no, whatever shit. But it's like, pretty much for every interaction you have, there's no nuance to the situation whatsoever. You can either give the kind answer, the sort of kind answer, or you can just be like super evil like like you can be so ridiculously evil in this game and for what I mean it's fun but it, it doesn't really make things interesting you know and going back to the story this is something that a lot of people have criticized and it's just so dumb that Fox being a super mutant is immune to radiation and he literally gets the Gek for you in the first place, and then he decides that he doesn't want to use it at the end, and basically tells you that you need to sacrifice your life because, I don't know, it's your destiny or something, which is like so stupid and so lazy writing-wise. He's done for! Ah. Yeah, don't worry, the safety glass will protect us. We all have our own destinies. And uh, it was so bad that they had to like, not retcon it, but they had to make an entire DLC expansion to make a, like a fourth act of the game so that way it finished on a more satisfying note. And speaking of derivative story elements, they also do the same thing Fallout 1 does by kicking you out of the vault uh, at the end of that quest line and basically saying that you're not allowed to come back despite putting in all the work to help the vault. And it's just not, not only has it already been done, but it's just not nearly as impactful as it was the first time. Please, if you really want to help the vault, you have to go. But you can't do this to me. And while I do like this world to an extent, it does feel rather monotonous both aesthetically and geographically. But I mean, what else are you to expect from the literal capital of the country after being devastated by nuclear war? And also, this is the first Bethesda Fallout game and the first East Coast uh, Fallout game, and there are plenty of video essays that talk about how Bethesda kind of inherently misunderstands the original Fallout, like both aesthetically and content-wise. Uh, so you can go watch some of those if you want a more in-depth analysis, but I mean, one big thing is that I kind of mentioned earlier is the creatures don't really make sense for the East Coast. I mean, a lot of them are just brought from the 2D Fallout games into the 3D world, which some of them are fine, but I mean, like I said, like rad scorpions and shit, really? But despite the game having many flaws, there is a lot of stuff to appreciate about it. I mean, first and foremost, this game is responsible for bringing Fallout into the 3D world. And yeah, while it's not as good as the originals, it does do a very good job at bringing a lot of the aspects of the originals into a more modern setting. So I gotta give Bethesda props for that. And also, outside of the main two factions in this game, there actually is some really cool side factions, like the dudes who are basically vampires and little lamplight. Oh, and also that whole secret little ghoul city, that was really cool. The game also offers some really cool set pieces. I'm not gonna forget the first time where you go in front of the Washington Memorial and the Lincoln Memorial and the White House and there's just explosions and like a giant battle going on in the trenches. That part's really awesome. The game also has a fantastic intro segment where, you know, you're growing up in the vault and it ultimately leads to there being a rebellion and you escaping. That whole part of the game was really, really cool and a really great way to do the tutorial and just introduce you to the game. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. I also really like how the skill checks uh, are in this game as opposed to like New Vegas where basically like whatever level you are is basically the requirement for passing certain checks while in Fallout 3 whatever level you are is the percentage 
that you need to or that you'll have in order to pass it like a chance so like if you're a level 60 then you have a 60 percent chance to pass for like speeches and stuff and i i like that system better this game also has some really really great quests like the whole ten penny tower situation with the ghouls and the rich folk and the moral dilemma that surrounds it the whole little lamplight situation where the kids eventually send each other off when they turn 18 to go to this really shitty town uh, Harold the tree, the classic Fallout character who turns into a tree in Fallout 3 and wants to die and is surrounded by these like cultists who need him to grow the trees around them or something. That's a really awesome quest. And also, who could forget nuking Megaton? What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. And of course, my favorite quest, and one of my all-time favorite Fallout quests in general, uh, Tranquility Lane, where you go into the simulation and live in this fantasy world where everybody's happy, and then you uncover the dark secrets of it. That, that mission's a really, really cool. The game also packs a excellent physics engine, which allows you to play around with the environment a lot, which is always a fun time. <laughs> And finally, the game also comes with some really, really great DLC, with the two standouts for me being The Pit, which is a very grisly look at the state of Pittsburgh, which is a, a very captivating story, and one of my all-time favorites, Point Lookout, which takes you down to some swamplands in Maryland, and it's very, like, eldritch, very Lovecraftian horror, and as a big Lovecraft fan, this this DLC is right up my alley. So yeah, there's a lot to hate about Fallout 3, but there's also a lot to love about it, and that's why it falls right around the middle of my list. Finally, moving away from Bethesda Fallout, we come to the first game in the series, the original Fallout. While Bethesda Fallout feels more like a dark comedy, this version of Fallout, the original version, paints a much more grim version of the wasteland. Right from the intro, this game builds some really incredible lore. Every character in every area and every faction of the game kind of serves a grim purpose of showing a dark side of humanity, and everyone doesn't necessarily play a huge role in the overarching story of the game, which I like. Yes, it's true that a lot of the factions and people you run into lead to bigger things later on, but it just kind of feels like you're exploring the wasteland and discovering things without ha without it having such like a monumental impact on you aside from the implications of what everything symbolizes. I mean, your sole objective is to find a water chip to save your fault, which automatically has nothing really to do with the world around you. You just happen to be a vault dweller innocently placed in this world of horrors as you try to desperately save your friends. And as you're looking for that chip, you uncover some really great mysteries and meet some interesting villains and face a lot of hardships. Being such a small cog in this world makes it feel a lot more dangerous and it feels much more like a survival game as it's very easy to die and in many cases it's better to run away than to fight, which also calls for a lot more interesting engagements. And the skills and the perk systems in both this and the sequel are just perfect and there's so many good ones and it really feels like a true RPG and you're building a very specific character. I also really like how the special stat charisma works in this game, unlike the 3D Fallout games where the higher the charisma you have, the more companions you can have with you, which I really wish they brought back. Companions of all which can actually die, which adds so much more to the pressure of conflicts. And that's another thing about Bethesda Fallout that I forgot to mention that I don't like is that there's so many quote unquote essential NPCs that you just can't kill. Oh yeah, such a true RPG, Todd Howard. And also having a low intelligence in this game is hilarious as it turns you into a non-verbal Neanderthal, which calls for a lot of hilarious interactions. No, not that. I want the computer chip. No, the chip. 
Just give me the chip! The top-down gameplay turns a lot of newer players off from trying the game out, but personally, I absolutely love it. I love the turn-based combat, and I love uh, the just seeing everything from this perspective that you see it in and interacting with NPCs. It doesn't feel that much different from the 3D world to me. It's just, it's just a different perspective with turn-based combat, and I think it's awesome. In fact, I'd actually argue that the turn-based combat is even better than the normal 3D combat because your skills apply more directly to the combat itself. The game also has one of the best and probably the most depressing ending of any Fallout game, where your overseer essentially tells you that thanks for your help, but we can't have you here anymore because you've been exposed to the wasteland, and your character just kind of walks away in shame after all that shit they went through to try to help, and it's... And it sucks. That's that's my dog growling. There are a couple of things that I don't like about this game. The number one being the timer that you have on the main quest, where it essentially gives you a certain amount of in-game days to find the water chip and save your vault before your vault gets destroyed and you lose the game. And without any real direction of where that is, that can be very frustrating because you're just slowly running out of time without any direction of what to do and it can be very stressful and it's just not not a fun gameplay experience. I also don't like how you only have 90 in-game days to find Necropolis or else all of the ghouls within Necropolis die and you just can't do any of their quests which is kind of unfair for a first playthrough because once again the game gives you no direction on where to go and if you really never find it, then you're just out of luck and you just miss an entire quest line. So that's kind of annoying. It also doesn't help that the world is relatively empty. There are a lot of cool things to see in the world and I do kind of like the the random encounters and the exploration of expect like not ex not knowing what you're going to find out there, but I mean compared to the other Fallout games, I mean even the sequel there's just there's just not that many locations, but all of this would be improved in the next title, which is Get out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? Fallout 2 is in many ways peak fallout it takes what the first game did and did well and improves on it in nearly every single aspect. Some people say they prefer the first game because it's more grim and dreary, but I think the second game is just as dark, if not a little bit darker even, as there are many upsetting moments that happen within the game, but I mean, the game literally opens with a family, including children, being ruthlessly slaughtered. I mean, this game keeps all the skills and perks and stuff of the first game, but just adds more, including a child killer perk, which essentially is if you kill a child, then everybody hates you and comes after you, which you can't do in Fallout anymore. This game has way more stuff to see than the first game. There are so many more cities and factions and the, the world just feels so alive and it's such a fun experience to go out and explore and interact with these people. And there's just so many good dialogue and interactions. It's, it's, it's great. And while the game retains a lot of the dark stuff of the first game, it also adds a whole layer of silliness, which just, it's a lot of fun, and there's so many hilarious moments in the game. The President of the United fucking States of America. Who do you think I was talking about? Who the fuck? Who is it? What? I should kick your fucking ass. Who is this? And a lot of these funny moments stem from the random events that you can run into uh, throughout the Wasteland, which is one of the best additions from the first game where just random crazy shit will happen as you're walking throughout the wasteland. Like, I don't know, a herd of cows with explosives strapped to them chasing you and exploding at you. Or one of the more crazy ones is finding a time portal which literally sends you to Vault 13 before the events of the first Fallout game. And you yourself are the one who sabotages the water chip which sets into motion all of the events of the first game, which is just great. The game also has some little easter eggs to find which adds humor, like, for example, finding a vault with just boxes and boxes of excess water chips when the first game revolves around struggling to go throughout all this shit just to find one. 
But yeah, I love all the settlements in this game. I love New Reno, how it's like a predecessor to New Vegas with the gambling and the mob bosses and stuff. I love the Vault City, which is like a city built around a vault. That place is really cool. I love seeing how the NCR has expanded since the first game and they had their own city. I love how San Francisco is ran entirely by the Chinese because they were in a submarine when the bombs dropped and I guess they came to shore and just completely repopulated San Francisco so now they control it which is an interesting concept and I mean the factions in general in this gr game are great I love seeing how the NCR has expanded um, and and I love how the, your interactions with the different factions kind of influence the endings of the game and how there's so many so many different endings and then of course there's the Enclave, which I mean, first of all, are a very menacing villain because if you run into them, like your chances are you're probably gonna die. It doesn't matter what you have, what level you are, like they're going to fuck you up. And I love that about them. It makes them so much more terrifying. And then midway through the story, after there's like a big plot twist, which I was rather shocked by, which um you you essentially get what you achieve you get the Gek to help your tribe and then you go back to your tribe to, to help them and it just turns out they're all dead because the Enclave killed them and that just makes you hate the Enclave even more which gives you much more reason and much more satisfaction to kill them all. You've gotten a lot farther than you should have, but then you haven't met Frank Horgan either. Your ride's over, Muty. Time to die. So yeah, I lo love the Enclave in this game. I also love how meet when you meet the president and he explains the the um, meaning of the vaults and their purpose and everything. Like th th that whole section's great. The dialogue in this game is also just so fun to read through and see the different reactions you get from people. And it's not anything like the yes, no, maybe options. It's like. All of it's different and nuanced and fun, and it's just such such a such good writing and just so fun to play with. This is like one of my top ten favorite games of all time, which is crazy to say because it's not even my favorite Fallout game, uh, which is the next one. I need to find my dad. I need to find my son. Betty, you little sugar, shit of fuck! You shot me in the face! I'm coming for your ass! I'm gonna put this in your hip! Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle. As I go riding merrily along. Oh, little bell, oh, little bell. So, what can I say about Fallout New Vegas that really hasn't been said? Nothing, I think. This is the game that officially moves Fallout into the 3D world. Sure, Fallout 3 did it, but it kind of did it because, you know, Obsidian is basically Black Isle Studios, which is basically the original Interplay who made the original game. So this is like 3D Fallout at its purest. And I mean, you can sense it, like just the atmosphere, the, the world, the factions, everything feels like real Fallout, it doesn't feel like a misinterpretation, it feels like it's coming from the real thing. I mean, gameplay wise, it's basically exactly like Fallout 3, in fact, it's kind of just like a giant Fallout 3 expansion. The thing is, they only had about a year to make it, and um, they did an excellent job. I mean, there are some extra perks and stuff, but I feel like Ultimately, the different builds in your characters and the perks and everything, I feel like are more important in this game. Like, it feels like it matters more. It feels like it applies to your character more. Maybe that's, maybe that's in my head. I, as a, I mean, compared to Fallout 3, I don't know. Something about it feels like everything that you choose feels important and it applies to the way you play the game. If I had a nickel for every time Obsidian was handed a critically acclaimed game franchise and given one year to make a sequel, only to make one of the greatest games of all time, I'd have two nickels, which isn't that much, but it's weird that it happened twice. One of my favorite things about Fallout New Vegas is that, kind of like Fallout 1 in a sense, you're not, you don't feel like the main character, you're just kind of thrown into this world and you explore it and 
the world kind of shapes you as much as you shape it. You're thrown into this conflict that's completely controlled by powers greater than yourself, yet your choices shape how the conflict is resolved. You don't really have as much of a strong goal in this game that you have in the other games. Like, in Fallout 1, your goal is to get the the water chip. In Fallout 2, your goal is to get the Gek. In Fallout 3, you're supposed to find your son. In Fallout 4, you're supposed to find your dad. But in this game, yes, you do have incentive to, like, go find Benny after what he did to you, but the reality is you're just kind of thrown into this world and you kind of figure out as you're playing what the fuck is going on and you just kind of do whatever you want. And the story of this game is really told through the environment and the interactions that you have with the different main factions and how your relationships with them change the landscape of the overarching story. And I think the story itself is great just being a huge power struggle between multiple different factions, which I also think is a brilliant setup for an RPG as it gives you a lot of freedom as to how you want to shape the conflict in the world. And Caesar's Legion being the main enemy is a really good one as I love not only are they super threatening, but I love Caesar's ideals and how he believes that in order to stray away from the society that created the apocalypse, they need to go as far away from modern society as possible, which to him is ancient Rome. And it's just such a unique faction. It's so cool. But the thing is, even though Caesar's Legion is the main antagonist, you can one side with them, but also everyone else that you can side with to shape the ending of the story is very morally ambiguous. You have the established NCR, a bureaucratic government who seem like the good guys on the surface level, but when you start digging you realize that they're pretty corrupt and they're gonna be taxing everybody and they're basically just a vision of the old world government, which is what destroyed the world in the first place. And then you have Mr. House, who is one of the most profound characters in the entire Fallout franchise, and probably my overall favorite character in the entire franchise, and also probably the most important character to the entire franchise, who is essentially this really old fucking dude who is super smart and has basically been able to keep himself alive for over 200 years and also managed to calculate when the bombs were going to drop and where they were going to drop and managed to protect New Vegas and essentially cocoons himself and controls over New Vegas as this computer man and he wants to essentially take over the wasteland and turn it into a paradise using his robots and make things more like the old world and keep everybody happy and clean. And while he's a very, very smart and convincing man, the moral problem with siding with him is that you're essentially putting a dictator in power who is going to have complete control over everything, and he's already shown to have somewhat of a temper and will eradicate entire factions and people just because they don't work out in his ultimate playing. game that he's playing. And then there's Yes Man, which essentially gives the player the freedom to say, you know what, I want to be the boss and I want to take control of the wasteland. And while to many that might seem like a good idea, the game likes to tell you afterwards that this basically sends the wasteland into chaos and anarchy and you're a terrible leader and, and it's just a big old piece of shit. We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care. And so the career has So there's upsides and downsides to every path you can take and I love that about the game. The game is so free that you can literally kill anybody you want, just like the old Fallout, except the children. You can kill every single NPC in the game and still complete the game. Can't say the same for Bethesda Fallouts. And like Fallout 2, this game has a slideshow ending based on the player's choices and it just has so many different endings. You know that funny statistic about Bowder's Gate, how they said there's like 70,000 different ending possibilities? Yeah, somebody did the math for Fallout New Vegas with that same metric and it's over one quadrillion endings. It's also such a fun world to explore. There's so many different landmarks to see and I love the old western style with the retro futurism mixed in there and New Vegas itself is so 
flashy and different. It also has probably the best run of companions in the entire Fallout series, with maybe the exception of Fallout 2. And just awesome characters in general, like Benny is fucking hilarious, best friend Tabitha. Oh, and speaking of Benny, this game probably has my favorite game intro of all time. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. The game also, of course, boasts a very great soundtrack, feeling very cowboyish and western. And there's also some absolutely fantastic DLC that comes with this game. I mean, there's the zany and hilarious old world blues. And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. One of the best Fallout characters we've ever gotten, Joshua Graham in Honest Hearts. Make no mistake. God willing, you will not leave this valley. The long, linear, and arduous journey of Lonesome Road. And then there's my favorite DLC, Dead Money, which tells an excellent story, has tons of philosophy, great characters, and makes you feel like you're completely worthless. Fallout New Vegas, I think, is definitively the best RPG I've ever played, and I think it's what all RPGs should strive to be. And, um, it's, it's just, it's a great game. It's so good. It's amazing, even. And it's my second favorite game of all time. And that is my Fallout ranking of the games. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you feel differently. Let me know if you agree. And uh, hopefully this Fallout show is good. I, I, I have my my reservations because, like, you know, it's, it's Todd Howard. But, you know, it, we'll see. 